You know you're gonna see the best of the worst with the shit flick critic. You know you're gonna see shit that's absurd with the shit flick critic. From Pandemic the Room, Samurai Cop Troll 2, Man of Sense of Fame, Miami Connection 2. So come along, see the worst with me, I'm the shit flick critic. G'day everyone, it's me, Andrew Lewis, the Shit Flick Critic, back with you all after a very long hiatus. I'm back from my travels, I'm back in Australia, and I figure might as well just jump straight back into a new episode. Now, it has been a long time since I've seen you all, and I figure rather than stand on ceremony, might as well just jump straight into it. So today I'll be reviewing a film that's been requested to me a lot over the years, and that's the infamous Double Down by Neil Breen. My name is Aaron Brand. I always thought I was doing the right thing and preparing for life. I was the first in my class in college in computer science. I joined the military and became a fighter pilot and won many medals for distinguished service. I've always lived between this world and the other. Double Down is an American thriller released in 2005 and was produced, written and directed by the infamous real estate agent slash architect turned filmmaker Neil Breen. A man whose facial features sit somewhere between Chuck Norris and Nicolas Cage. His other credits include editor, production designer, production manager, casting, locations, and catering. You know, Neil, with a production this small and a film with such a low budget, it's kind of implied that you had to do a lot of the roles yourself, so a simple made by Neil Breen would have sufficed, but there's no hit to an egomaniac quite like seeing your name over and over again. And now, on a completely different note that had nothing to do with what I was just talking about and is in no way a segue into a joke, I'd like to just take a moment to thank the crew here at Shit Flick Critic, all with who out this wouldn't be possible. Neil Breen has garnered a lot of publicity and in turn has received Tommy Wiseau-like stardom for his string of very low-budget films with strange and surreal plots. Another well-known feature of Neil Breen films is that he always plays the lead role and has his own unique brand of terrible, terrible acting. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. You have no idea how much this will impact my weekend schedule. To be honest, I actually have no idea what's going on in this movie, so I'll try and sum up the plot as best as possible. Double Down follows the story of Aaron Bran, a man who is seemingly supernaturally gifted with computers, despite apparently lacking the ability to turn them on, and who used to work for the United States as a secret agent. After his future wife is killed in a botched assassination attempt on his life by the government, Aaron takes to the Mojave Desert surrounding Las Vegas and there sets up many booby traps to protect himself from any would-be assassin while also using his brilliant computer skills to intervene with government operations. It is also out in the desert that Aaron starts the wheels in motion for his own biochemical terrorist attack on Las Vegas as retribution for the murder of his wife, but begins to have second thoughts after having a toddler tantrum in the desert due to his inner conflict and newfound sense of national pride. I can't go on with this! I can't go on with this! I'm an American! I'm an American! I love this country! And that day, for no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. So I ran to the end of the road, and when I got there, I thought maybe I'd run to the end of town. And when I got there, I thought maybe I'd run across Greenbow County. And I figured since I run this far, Maybe I'll just run across the great state of Alabama. After also realizing that perhaps maybe senselessly killing millions of people because of something the government did might be considered a bit of a dick move, Aaron endeavors to thwart his own plans that he's put in motion. Other than the main plot, there are a whole lot of very Lynchian-like supernatural elements that are very strange. Is there life after death? Dad? Is there a heaven? We are filled with love and we are at peace. In fact, the whole film seems like it's happening in the mind of one of those crazy people that sit next to you on the bus and offload all of their psychosis at you. Chemical and biological weapons can be much more destructive to societies and economies. Yes, yeah. the bus is empty. Weapons. You could cheap, 
They can be transported by anyone, anywhere. They involve little scientific technology. They can be dispersed silently and discreetly without anyone knowing it. And the terrorists make a clean getaway. I think that's the basic plot to double down, but it's hard to say because I found myself zoning out a lot while watching this movie. Must remember to pick up that laundry detergent that's on special with the fabric softener. I wonder what fabric softener does, because I've never really felt like my clothes were that hard. Everything I need is always with me. Satellite dishes, five laptops, six cell phones, and bioterror. Everyone always says you shouldn't mix darks and whites in the laundry machine, but I've never experienced any problems. Hey, who made that hole in the wall? Was that me? Governments don't dare try to kill me. If you boil Double Down down, the bare elements would make a film that would probably only be about 20 minutes long. But due to its Robin Williams and Miss Doubtfire like padding, the movie stretches itself all the way to the 90 minute mark. Much like Edward, Neil utilizes a lot of stock footage throughout Double Down, which all seems to have been filmed somewhere between 1985 and 1992, which in turn makes Double Down feel incredibly dated. Other than the offhanded mention of 9-11 in one of the scenes, it's hard to imagine that this film was made after the year 2000, also not helped by the fact that it was shot on some very grainy film at a time where most productions were moving to a digital medium. Hell, the scene where Aaron proposes to his wife looks like it was just straight up ripped out of a porn from the 70s. Well, hey there, little lady. You sure are looking super fly. You wanna get it on? Yeah, yes. Then come here and give daddy a little bit of sugar. It would seem that the actress who plays Aaron's future wife agreed to do the pool scene under the condition that she not be completely naked, so she's wearing a G-string. Unfortunately for us, Neil does get naked in that scene. And for anyone who hasn't seen Double Down yet, I must admit that that pool scene isn't for the taint of heart. I'm also not sure who I'm supposed to be rooting for, as Aaron certainly doesn't seem like the hero due to his blasé attitude when contemplating exterminating millions of people and profiting off murder as a gun for hire. I've been giving away the money to children's support charities all over the world. Orphanages, hospitals, and schools. Huh, I take it back. Maybe Aaron isn't such a bad guy after all. I've planted biological bombs in seven major cities around the world that will destroy the economy of that city and release a biological attack on the population which will kill hundreds of thousands. So I'm confused, Aaron. Do you want to save the children or do you want to kill the children? Because I hate to break it to you, but children do have a habit of, ooh, I don't know, living in cities? Another reason why Aaron is a very difficult character to root for is that he spends a lot of time talking about his accomplishments and he isn't the most humble person. I can tap into any government secret system by way of my computers, cell phones and satellites. Hell, I invented half the systems. I control access to anything and everything. Even from my little simple, brilliant setup. Ooh, if you do say so yourself. <laughs> But for all of Aaron's computer hacking abilities, Aaron certainly makes a terrible, terrible assassin. In fact, the first time we see the body of someone he's killed, not only are they not quite dead, I'm not dead! But he hasn't even buried them properly. At one point of the film, Aaron meets up with two 12-year-old boys who wish to hire him to carry out an assassination for them. An assassination. We want to kill someone. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. I thought this was going to be one of those assassinations where the person was left alive. Although given that this is Aaron we're talking about, it's probably best to specify. You're a genius. The best. But you know that. Please don't inflate Aaron's ego, it's already dangerously high as it is. And even though Aaron is a terrible assassin, he's miles better than the agents who are sent to monitor their conversation, whose methods of surveillance include ramming a shopping trolley into the car that has a piece of bubble gum with a bug in it, to literally just sitting in the car with a video camera pointed directly at them. I couldn't let them notice that I saw that diode being planted on my car. God, even Mr. Magoo would have seen that. So to carry out the assassination, Aaron goes about paying a valet to borrow a fancy car, 
injecting poison into strawberries that would later be placed in champagne glasses, why he doesn't just poison the champagne itself I'm not sure, picking the target couple up from their wedding and giving them said poison strawberries. The strange thing is that Aaron only seems to kill the man with the poison as the girl is only temporarily knocked unconscious and then awakens soon after with some short term memory loss. And all this he does to the wrong couple. In fact the only reason why the assassination is successful at all is because the actual target couple just happened to commit suicide anyway. Well, that was a freebie. Then there's this really dark scene where Aaron dumps the girl he abducted in the desert with her dead husband and even makes a little quip about it. Here's your husband. <laughs> Something that drives me insane about Double Down is that whenever there's a close-up of someone talking or someone's hand, there's always clear blue sky behind them no matter where they are. Standing in a car park, clear blue sky. In a swimming pool by a hotel, clear blue sky. Standing in front of the Luxor Hotel, a 36-story casino in Las Vegas that stands a whooping 100 meters tall, clear blue sky. He could have a scene that takes place in a bunker buried deep within the Earth's crust, but when there's close-ups, clear blue sky. Double Down is a very peculiar ego project that is as strange as it is terrible. I judge shit films based on five categories. Number one, laughability. I did laugh in Double Down, but I wouldn't say that I was just, you know, on the ground throughout the whole thing. Due to its pacing, it can be very, very boring. Number two, rewatchability. I think one viewing of Neil Breen's Taint is enough for one lifetime. Number three, pace. It's just so drawn out and it goes on and on and there's scenes of him running through the desert and then there's stock footage and no, the pacing in Double Down is abysmal. Number four, production value. Look, other than, you know, some of the really questionable stock footage and the graininess of some of the shots, like, it's filmed relatively well. And number five, intention. Double Down was clearly made as an ego project. It was something that I'm sure was on the back of Neil Breen's mind the entire time that he was an architect or a real estate agent. He was thinking to himself, you know, I get such a kick every time I see my picture on a park bench that says Neil Breen Real Estate. What if I made an ad for myself that went for an hour and a half where I just got to talk about how amazing I was, how good I was at computers, how great I was with women. So yeah, in that aspect, that's what I don't like about Double Down, is it wasn't really made as a passion project, it was made just more to fuel Neil Breen's ego. All in all, I give Double Down minus two stars. It's worth a watch and there are some pretty memorable scenes, but due to its pacing and how slow it is, it's a drag and quite a grind to get through. So thus concludes another episode of the Shit Flick Critic. This has been my first episode in a while and it will not be my last. I'm going to start making these quite regularly now, regularly. Uh, I've got a good setup. Um, I feel like I could be pumping out, I, I don't want to say bi-monthly. Does that mean every two months or does that mean twice a month? Whichever one means twice a month, that's how, you know, that, that might be a bit of a promise, but you know, pretty, pretty regularly every two or three weeks, I'm hoping to upload another episode. And I just want to thank, and I, I know I, I've said this a lot, but I want to thank everyone so much for being patient. Um, I really needed those two years to myself, I went backpacking in America, um, backpacking around New Zealand, backpacking around Mexico, Canada, and it was just a great time to reflect and for me to realize what's important about my life. And, you know, the moment the plane touched down in Australia, I just thought to myself, man, I just really want to make another episode of Shit Flick Critic. So I'd much rather want to make one than feel like I have to. And I really did want to make this episode. I'm glad it's done. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'll be making him more. Uh, I will be uploading the Q&A relatively soon. I've got all the questions, so that's going to be in a couple days or, you know, within the week. Uh, thank you, everyone who submitted a question. I'll, I'll make sure to remember everyone. And, yeah, it's just nice to be back. And what now? I mean, normally at this point, I used to do the thing where I had all the different um, episodes, but I don't even know how this is going to work anymore. I think at the end of videos, there's just like a watermark with with videos I, I think i picked them i don't know it's been ages so i'm just gonna stare in silence and you'll see what i work out to do because it will just be there so uh thank you so much for watching